on the compound. Ah, sunset, ah, so beautiful, ah, 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 ah. <laughs> He's like, what are you doing? He's like, are you okay? Are you okay? Here, let me put my feet on your forehead. <laughs> I'm gonna check your temperature. I'm gonna check your temperature. You're acting stranger than normal. I'm fine, Archie. I'm fine. <sighs> Hello, all you big cat lovers out there. It's me, Derek, again. Welcome to another super duper fantastic episode of the Walk Around the Compound webcast. Hi, how are you? Oh my gosh, it's like, like a, a week. Technically speaking, it's only been like three or four days as far as the official uh, campaign is concerned. And I'm saying this in relation to when I'm filming this. I'm filming this on Saturday. Of course, the webcast is not going to get posted until Tuesday. But the campaign is doing wonderfully well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to everyone who's donated. You guys are awesome. You guys are so cool. Did you know that? You are? But, uh, yeah, we're already halfway to our goal. We're already halfway. Which is awesome. It's just a testament. A te testament. To the relationship, I think, that we have as an organization with our supporters. And the track record. And basically, we've got a bunch of stuff that we can point to and just be like, that's where things have gone. New balls for the cats. Personal trainers. Because they keep eating them. Layla, you know, we thought that there, there was, she had a new one last week, his name was Ronaldo, and, uh, you know, it just, we, we were like, I think that this one's going to be good, and then we go and check the enclosure, all we see are just a pair of shoes with the feet still in them. <laughs> we're, we're like, Layla, and she's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I know. Cue the laugh track. I love comment sections. I really do. I think it's just some of the some of the best instances of uh, like like gauging an online community, gauging like what people are really feeling, engaging the pulse. And then it's also, like, because you, you'll, there's times where you see things, I've talked about this comment sections before, you'll see someone who is an obvious troll, obviously trying to get a rise out of someone, just saying ridiculous stuff. And, but then you can, you see a little bit of their humanity. And then you'll see, like, the, the type of person that they, they respond, like, Wah! <sighs> and sometimes, sometimes like the best comments, sometimes the best comment sections are uh, they're for like relatively benign topics. Like they they're not anything that's explicitly hard hitting, you know, like. It was a, a staunchly divided political debate. <laughs> it's like movies or gaming consoles. <laughs> it's just stuff that doesn't matter. Stuff that doesn't really matter. But I was bouncing around on Imager. I'm an Imager, by the way. I like Imager. 
<laughs> Sometimes Imagerians as a whole can be a little bit just like, okay. <laughs> okay, all right. But for the most part, I, I enjoy the type of content that makes it to the front page. I just, it's a nice little thing. It's one of those kind of things, you know, when you're pooping and you just like, just swipe. Hey, I'm looking at memes. I'm looking at cute cat pictures. This is all right. This is fun. I like it. <laughs> and then someone kind of posted a screen grab from Fight Club. And it was like a, one of the quotes, it was like Tyler Durden thing. And it, it got, but the thing is though, it, it sparked this interesting conversation down in the comment section. Cause it was one of the things where it's like, oh, like our generation didn't have, now mind you, uh, Fight Club came like, came out like right before, this was, this was a point that was being made and it was very interesting, but it was a point that was made down in the comment section, but Fight Club came out like right before 9-11 and that changed everything because even the quote itself basically said like we haven't had our world war we haven't had our depression we haven't had our you know our trying kind of thing and it it seemed poignant and like whoa but then you get a little bit older and then it's just like ugh, you know like whoa, edgy oh you're so edgy tyler <laughs> ah! uh, definitely that's that was the thing and I and don't get me wrong, I love Fight I really do. I love Fight Club. Hi, Ezzy. Ez, Ez. Hi. Hi, bud. Hi. 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 Yeah. Yeah. But. I guess it was funny, like, some of the comment section back and forth type stuff between people who are just like yeah just the system and like you know like all of our society and other people kind of saying just like this it's kind of silly that people didn't realize that this whole movie was like a satirization of certain elements of you know hyper masculinity and whatnot even though it was celebrated and it's like you know, people are like, well, it's kind of like how train spotting was. And I, and like, I thought to myself, like, it was a good point. These people are making some interesting valid points. Oh. <laughs> but then, of course, here's the thing. There's the thing. Eventually, like, you're going to step. Like, you're going to just simply, like, and I, this is what I saw. People were just expressing just very basic, simple opinions. Like, yeah, you know, like, this movie was something that was revered by me when I was like a younger man when I was in my teens and 20s I thought that this movie had way more significance and way more importance and then as I got into like my 30s and I'm just like Ugh. it just it's just kind of angsty oh my gosh you have you have proteins angst pro tangst poopa luca poopa luca Look at that pretty boy. You're so handsome. You're handsome. Protein. Oh, whoa. But invariably, whenever you're talking about anything, and this and this is one of those things. And I will say, I still regard Fight Club to be a fantastic piece of cinema. I really do. It's, it was a very, very well-made movie, just tremendously acted. It's, it's, it was a very kind of generation-defining thing. Yes, absolutely. It spoke to people, even though like you grow up a little bit and you're just like, all right, <laughs> this doesn't doesn't have the same resonance. But as far as something that belongs within you know the zeitgeist which i love that word by the way and if you don't know what it means you should look it up uh, or i can try to just give you a thing zeitgeist is basically just like the collective uh, the collective consciousness or the collective kind of going on or just just like what what people are thinking how they define themselves and this is like collectively like as a society or a culture, or just a, a people's 
You know, so when you say something was has entered into the zeitgeist of American culture, you can say, like, you people will make references like, oh, he's kind of pulling like a Tyler Durden. Maybe this person, maybe you know someone in your life that's kind of, you know, going crazy or something like that. It, it, it's, has, it's a movie that has so much cultural impact that the characters are just, you know, easily referenced in normal day-to-day -day conversation. That's kind of what zeitgeist is. Anyway, conversations are had. Conversations are had. And invariably, whenever you have someone, and they're just giving like really basic, not inflammatory, they're not being mean or rude. They're just like, yeah, you know, this used to be my thing, not so much my cup of tea. And then there are other people who will respond to that just like, hey, why don't you and your condescending piece of crap attitude just shut the hell up? And it's like, whoa, whoa. And you can tell. You can just tell even by the tone, by the text, the, the, the reply, the, the tone in the reply, um, that basically that initial comment was tantamount to a grenade being thrown at that person's sacred cow. My goodness. My goodness. Obviously, the person who replied had a very high regard for Fight Club, and it meant something very, very deep to that person. And they will be darned to let someone on the internet speak ill of the thing that you love? <laughs> I say no. Oh, but that to me, the dynamic, of that, the back and forth, oh, I love it. Because then I sit there and I think, like, what is going on with, what is going on in that person's life? Hi, boys. Hi, my friend. Hi. Wah, wah. You are eating your food. You're eating your food. Hi, mister. Hi, my prince. Oh, my gosh, I know. Oh, you has your food. You has your food. Hi, soups. Okay. What? 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 Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. That's cool. That's cool. I don't mind. It's all good, bud. I love watching stuff like that. That's why I love... Love reading comment sections. Oh my gosh. News? Like certain... <laughs> there's like different news sites, of course. Where you go, you, you look at a story, and then you like, comment section has been... Uh, the comments have been disabled for this particular news story. And then you're just like, ah, <laughs> ah, I wanted to see the chaos. I'm like hedonism, but I don't know. They're like, why do you indulge in these types of things, Derek? And I'm just like sitting there on the duvet feeding myself grapes. And I'm just like, I regret nothing. Engage in combat for my pleasure. <laughs> Yay. It's the sign that our time and the people in our society, it's basically indica an indicator that we're, we're just going down everything. It's, got, it's going down. <sighs> this is, yeah, that's it. That's, that's what you're pointing to, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything's going down. Everything's, every, it's all going away. It's a civilization, society. The fabric. Okay. You realize that we've only had this ability. You realize that we've only had these tools for like like 15, 20 ish kind of years, something like that. You know, instantaneous communication on a planetary scale. Like, we're very, this is a new thing. 
for our for our species. Hi, 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 hi. Hi, Prince. Hi, my Prince. Hi, my Prince. Oh, hi, mister. How are you? You're a good boy. You're a good boy. Look at Zeus. Look at Zeus. Oh, Ra, it's okay. Ra, I don't want to film you. I want to film Zeus being cute. You're not being cute. All right, fine. No pictures. Bye, the hoops. Don't, don't leave. <laughs> he, he beats me. <laughs> All right, well, good luck with that. Otherwise, yeah. Not terribly too much new. Not terribly too much going on. Just got done feeding. It's gonna get hot. It rained pretty good today and yesterday, which is definitely it was it's been getting kind of squirrely as far as uh things drying up. And you always worry about that. You don't want things getting brittle and crinkly. That sucks. That really does. You just worry about fires. You worry about that type of stuff. Anytime that there's rain. And it doesn't, may not really seem like it, but it's like you can, you can see there's a greenish, a tinge. There's a greenish tinge. So the grass has been drinking it. The grass has definitely been drinking it. And that's good. That's a good, good, good thing. I remember when I first started working here. I think it was like one of the first summers. And it just, it was an unseasonably wet summer. And it rained like every day, almost every afternoon. Hi, Ezzy. Ezzy. Hi, Jake. Ooh, hi, Jake, Jake, Jake. Hi, Mr. Jake. It rained almost every afternoon, and I remember, and I was first starting to work here, and it's just like, there was just puddles everywhere, and you gotta bail that stuff out, and then you gotta make sure there's, like, we were going through so much bleach, and we're doing, and I'm just like, oh my gosh, rain, will you just stop? You're making things wet. You're making things muddy. You're making my life difficult. Then fast forward a few years. Summer of 2011. And I'm talking, oh boy, that, that's, again, it's one of those things, I'm not even, I'm not even being hyperbolic when I say this, I am going to be able to tell my grandkids about that one. There's a hundred straight days of a hundred degree weather, which is some, some, some centigrade. It was a hundred days of over, either at or over a hundred degrees, which is, what is a hundred, what is that, 38 for, is it 30 or is it 42? Like 42 Celsius, I think. It, it's just, it's up there. And, yeah. And it was also like mixed with a catastrophic drought. Awful, awful, terrible drought. Everything was just brittle and dust. And hot. And it was just day after day after day after day after day. And you just saw, and we were just working so hard. The water tables were low, so that, like, even, even, like, the well would, uh, would reset more often. It just was terrible. And then there were times you would just look up and to, at any given day, at any point in the horizon, you know, multiple, four, five, six, seven little just like puffs of smoke off in the distance, sometimes bigger, sometimes closer. Every day it got like that. And it's just like, jeez, this, this is not good. So, yeah.
And then people, of course, people like, like, what would you do? And it's like one of the big things is, of course, like, you know, you have to, you have to make sure that things stay mowed and that certain vegetation, like, just naturally stays low anyway. I mean, of course, there's certain types of things like trying to create, uh, dirt walls and fire breaks and stuff like that. Or, um, you go around with the tractor and then basically you're, you're tilling up the earth in, uh, strategic areas in and around, you know, like property type stuff. It's all depend. It's it's also it's depending on the wind. It's depending on where fire actually is, you know. So it's like there's there's different things that you can do, and then yeah, you just you know, firefighters and pray. Jeez. Water, get your hoses out. That's like what would you do? Like yeah, there's there's a number of things, but just making sure that <laughs> like. All of that, yeah, you can have plans. You can have a plan. You know, like the words of the great Mike Tyson, everyone has a plan until they get punched in the mouth. <laughs> Which is, it is one of my favorite quotes because it sums up so many elements and aspects of life. Hi, Yano. Yano, Yano, Yano. Hi. Hi, bud. But some of that stuff, like as far as like the big level, like mowing, like making sure that those pastures and stuff like that are just nice and like cleared down makes a huge difference. Just doing stuff like that. Those are preventative measures. Look at that. That looks like a like a Komodo dragon or something or a lizard. You know, it doesn't it looks too kind of rounded. Maybe to be a bird. Maybe some sort of condor, you know? Uh maybe like a dinosaur like that. But it's like really he's either laying down or he's like really flat. Or fat. Yeah. That is a thunderstorm, by the way. Way up in the distance. That thing. That thing is probably, I'm not even joking when I say this, it's probably about like 80 miles away. Maybe even close to 100. Yeah. You can, you can see far away when you're here in Texas. That thing, that storm is probably actually in or over Oklahoma. Is probably how far away that storm is. I'm just guessing. That's just my guess. Hi. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Angry girls, angry girls. They're being locked up right now because uh, we're dropping, dropping pools. Dropping pools. Into their, uh, into their enclosure. Had to clear my throat. So, going back to the original topic, I'd like to hear maybe some of your viewpoint, viewpoints, or your own personal experience regarding um, maybe like old movies or old TV shows or things that maybe you held in like really high regard when you were young. Oh. <laughs> What is, what, what, what was that? What was that? Yeah, you can be such a jerk. You can be such a jerk. What, what did I do to deserve that? But was it like movies, music, TV, anything like that, that it spoke to you? On just a deep level. And then, like, you tried to tell, like, other people and your parents, like, they didn't, they didn't understand. Like, you were beyond them. You were beyond their plebeian sensibilities. Like, you don't get it. You don't get it. Yeah. And then you grow up. You get a little bit older. You get a little bit wiser. 
And then you're like, oh, yuck. Oh, yuckaroo. I can't believe that I really like that thing as much as I did. Don't get me wrong. It can still be like a guilty pleasure, but of course, like you're, you're tempered against like actual, you know, grown up kind of experiences and stuff like that. Is there, is, is there anyone, any one of you who have a few more kind of, a few more winters under your belt than, you know, your average youngster? I'm gonna hear ya. Oh, another movie for me? Surf Ninjas. I think I've talked about that one. I loved it. I thought that that thing was a genius work of art. And honestly, I could probably still watch it and be like, I do find tremendous nostalgic enjoyment out of this. I'm not actually, like if I if I was forced to just sit and like, if I never saw that movie like a, a thousand times when I was a kid, um, if I never saw it once, and then I actually sat down to watch it as an adult, I'd be like, this thing is garbage. <laughs> Woo, this is a bad movie. Not good. <laughs> uh, but now, having like the relationship with it, it's just kind of, yeah. That's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Uh. Patusan. <laughs> so bad. Oh, there was another one. It was called Airborne. Anyone ever did anyone ever see that movie? Airborne. It was about rollerbladers, and this one guy. I think he like moved, it was like he moved from California to Pennsylvania because his dad got a job or something. So he was like this cool kind of like West Coast surfer guy, and then he moved to the Rust Belt, and just it's so cringy, and he was like bullied by the other like tough rollerbladers. <laughs> yeah, yes, yes. It's as bad as you might think. It had Seth Green in it. And at the end of the movie, and I'm not even making this up, they had to have uh, a, co a contest. The bullies versus the cool surfer guy. They had a contest and they rollerbladed down a hill in their town and it was called the Devil's Backbone. Oh yeah. <laughs> so, 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 so cringy. And I remember, like, there's a part of the movie where the dude, because the surfer guy, he and, like, his only friend in the Rust Belt, his only friend, his only Pennsylvania friend was Seth Green. That's it. That was his only Pennsylvania friend. And he told him, he's like, I accepted a challenge to go down the devil's backbone. And his friend Seth Green is like, the he like spit out his water, like, the devil's backbone. I re and he, the, I think the line that he said in it was something akin to, I remember hearing about the last guy who tried to walk down it. He got like all messed up. It is so bad. But I remember as a kid, I'm like, this is great. I watched that movie a bunch. Because I, I don't, like, we had, for, there was different interval periods where we had some of, like, you know, the movie channels. But I don't think we really had HBO off. And we usually had more, like, Cinemax. <laughs> so those are the types of things that they would, uh, that they'd have on there. It's basically, like, HBO was, was ba like, that was the brand name Serial. Okay, that was, like, your Lucky Charms and then your Fruit Loops and everything. And then the like Cinemax was oftentimes more of like your your bargain cereals, you know. It's like, hey, would you like to try some of these uh, Irish marshmallows? Like, oh, great. Uh, would you like to try to to have some of these uh, berry O's? <laughs> you know, it's just ugh. not always the best. <laughs> this is getting kind of just silly and rambly. Anyway. Thanks for watching this episode of the Walk Around the Compound webcast. Let me know what you think in the comments section below. Any stuff that you just thought was just such an awesome thing when you were a kid. Now as an adult, you're just like, ugh. <laughs> this kind of makes you cringe a little bit. Come on, let us know. I let you know some of mine. I let you know some of mine. So now you have to share. Anywho, hashtag Dorbus Award in the comments section below. Like and subscribe and all that fun stuff. I will talk to you fine folks on Thursday. All right. Bye-bye.